Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today we are sitting down for the 11th day of the 12 days of Old Forester, and we're sitting down with Josh and uh, Tyler Mert. How are we doing today, gentlemen? Excellent. Thanks for having me. Old foe fame boy in the house. Yep, yep, yep. And today for the 11th day, Josh, I'm going to let you lead us in on this. What, what are we drinking, bud? On the 11th day of Old Foe, a liquor store sold to me a single barrel, barrel strength, Old Forester, Reigning in at 63.45% alcohol by volume, 126.9 proof from that K, how, K warehouse, floor three. I, I had to say from that K warehouse because somebody's been posting all over. Uh, warehouse K. Warehouse K. This, uh, this actual bottle is a part of the Louisville Bourbon Club Private Barrel Club Selection with Ever Cox's and Evergreen Liquor uh, collaboration with them. Um, and it happens to say on the back, it's got a taterific sticker that they added to it. Not sold like this from the, the distillery, but the glue holding this 2020 shit show together has a, a rocks glass on the back with some whiskey and uh, rocks in it. So It is definitely an entertaining sticker that they added to the aftermarket. Once you pick, once you paid for it, you got the sticker and you get to add it on there yourself. So, so do you guys know, before we dive deep into the whiskey, are tater stickers all over the continental U S or is it just a, a Louisville region? No, it's all over the place. Um, stickers, um, the, the new big thing and, and, and Josh, I think you've seen a handful of them is wax. People love wax dipping them. They, they get excited like that maker's mark and they're uh, doing some crazy dunks there. I mean, heck, I mean, even even um, um, the local distillery in southern Indiana did uh, monster dunks this year for their family rye and their family uh, bourbon. So, Do you like it when you have to mess with the wax that's not properly it, seated with a pull tab? Well, as long as it's got a pull tab, I'm cool. Um, I'm cool as long as it's got a pull tab. If it doesn't, I hate cutting wax to open the bottle and hoping that I get it at the right joint and all that stuff because it definitely does happen. So, I, You know, the wax doesn't do a whole lot for me, but uh, this Old Forester single barrel barrel strength bottle does. So this one, it's a little hot. And you guys know that um, I have traditionally stayed on the lower proof side uh uh, stick stuck more with the 90 proof and things that are a little sweeter for me a little just kind of uh, smoother to say the least and over the last year year and a half of doing the podcast with you we, uh, we've learned you up you have learned me up to the higher proof stuff but I still love that 90 proof man uh, but this one here uh, so tell us what you think Tyler have you had a chance to take a sip take a smell I have this one's this one's fun. You're right. It, it's a it's a big boy. It's definitely more confectionery than we had on day eleven, which was kind of those earthy, chocolatey uh, soil tones, oh, leathery t- tones. Today's day eleven. Today's day. Then we had on day ten. Um, apologies. Uh, this is confectionery. It's all about the caramel, maple, toffee, vanilla. I'm getting a lot of those sweeter notes. So tell us what what is going on right now with the barrel picks. Are you all, you're not having anybody down to the distillery to do barrel picks? Is it all by uh, sending out sample bottles to them? It is, yeah. It's all um, just Jackie going to the warehouse, drawing barrels, um, collecting samples, and it's it's all kind of a crapshoot because they every account in the country is getting three bottles shipped to them. They make their own selections, or they go online with me and do a, a virtual barrel selection where I kind of walk them through it, but, uh, it's all done virtually for the last seven, almost eight months now, man. I'm really glad you put that confectioners confectionery in my, my mind here because this thing has a sugar bomb smell to it. it and it's, it's just like you were baking cookies or something and got into some confectioner sugar and it just smacks you right in there. Yeah, I'm getting brown sugar. I'm getting some of that. Um, I'm getting some vanilla, which is you know it's a it's very very strong and reminiscent there. And, and, and oddly enough, I'm getting almost like a what's that Cuban dessert that's got flan? Flan. flan. Yeah. yeah. It, I'm getting like a that caramelized sugar that goes on the top of flan when they make flan, and then that that nice uh, silky like oily finish you know on there on this one. It's got a really sweet uh, 
palate, a really sweet front of your mouth kind of taste to it. Um, I don't know what flan tastes like. I'm not sure I've ever had flan, but flan tastes similar to creme brulee, only it's not quite as sweet as what is the best way I would describe and, it. And do yourself a favor, go go find some. Go yeah. find Delicious. some flan. Yeah, yeah. Vanilla and uh, and uh, yeah, the caramelized, caramelized sugar. sugar, things like that. Yeah, yeah this is fun because you can find vanilla in any bourbon, but when it really comes out and is like front and center, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, man, this is really good. It's a it's hot. Oh, it's, it's definitely got say. a punch. It's it's got a punch to it, and, and, and I, you know I love the high proof stuff. But like this is super. I, mean, I know some people get butt hurt when you call bourbon hot, and, and this is a little hot to me. But it has so many flavors in there that are just going to open everything up for you. And I guarantee, add a add a drop or two of water. Wait five minutes. Um, the one thing that we've really tried to advocate, especially that I've tried to advocate. Um, when we transition to a barrel proof bourbon is one always advocating drink it how you like it. Um, we're just happy that, you know, you're drinking it, but two don't, you know, just fall into the trap of never adding water. There is, uh, the best analogy I've come up with is, you know, there's so much behind there and these bottles are expensive. They're, you know, almost a hundred dollars with tax. So, to to not add water and see how it unfolds because you're not tasting everything at 133 proof, 135 proof. You, you're, it's it's masking that that alcohol is masking so many other flavors and aromas. Uh, it's like you buy a ticket to a concert, you go see Tom Petty or something, hundred dollar concert ticket. You drive to the arena, you sit down, he comes out and sings Wildflowers, and then you get up, you get in your car, and you drive home, and you never hear Free Falling, you never hear Learning to Fly, you never hear all those other layers and things that you you would have gotten so you know add a couple drops of water wait five minutes see how it unfolds add a few more drops you're still going to be at 115 120 and i think it that's really going to open it up so i dropped a, a few drops of water maybe a little more than a few but I'm telling you now I'm getting, uh, I want to call it a tobacco leaf kind of smell out of this thing. Uh, a strong leafy aroma, something dried. I get tobacco, but I'm getting more of like a, your grandpa's old cherry tobacco pipe type pipe tobaccos when I'm getting on this one on the nose. When I added the water, it really opened it up a little bit. Which is, and that's weird too. I always get, as soon as I add water, like you guys are saying, as soon as I add it, I get more of those woodsy tea notes, like the tea comes out and those woody notes come out. But then when it sits, then it really blossoms with the fruit and the uh, the confectionery notes, the maples and the caramels and all that come out. I'm guessing that I could probably get uh, tea notes confused with tobacco leaves. Absolutely. No, they're same very, difference. They're very, very similar. That's just what I would have remembered it as, but... Uh, so the barrel strength, you can't find them on a shelf in Louisville unless you happen to get it the day that it drops. Do, do you all see, do you know, do, do we expect that at some point the hotness is going to go away and these are going to be able to be found uh, on a shelf on a regular basis? You know, I that's a very tough question to answer. It's a great problem to have. We're not going to say it's not. Um, you know, it would be a, it wouldn't be good if it, if the hotness did go away, like everything that's new, I think it might abate somewhat, just kind of start waning up, but I think it's going to be two years or so at least until everybody at least gets their hands on one. But man, the way this, uh, this bourbon boom is going, I, I don't think we're slowing down for the next 20 years at least. Yeah, and I wasn't laughing at you, Josh. Per yes, se. you were. I was just laughing at the fact that, A, I was sitting here thinking about the fact that, A, I, I've only seen, I think, 100 proof barrel pick since they started barrel strength. Well, I and will locally, tell you, uh, around the country, we're probably, because you get your choice. You right. Can, you can do 100 proof or barrel strength, and it's 20 to 1. I would one. bet. Okay. Barrel proof so, to 100 proof. So that's, that's, that's the other thing I was laughing about. Cause it's like, I'm like, even is even knowing that they're only doing barrel strength, it's just every time I've tried to get one at an actual liquor store, I've only had luck twice. And, and I, and I typically know liquor store owners. I mean, for what I do for a living, I know a bunch of them and they're like, 
Man, I just I literally I set it out and it's gone. So you drink for a living? I sort of. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you really I, do. I taste for a living. I taste for a living. I don't. But no, it's amazing. I did an article on this a couple years ago. It's it's not just bourbon. You can trace it back all the way to like Food Network back in '93 and the advent of these celebrity chefs and the uh, the craft beer brew the craft beer boom apologies but our tastes american taste no matter what it is are are going bigger you know bigger bolder bigger bolder fast food restaurants didn't used to have chipotle ranch on the menu um these ipas didn't used to be 120 or more ibus and bourbon is kind of following the same trend it's interesting so i added water to this and uh you know, it's funny. I I started pulling out way more of the rye notes when when I added water. Like I get a little bit more of those uh, undertones. It, it took away some of that sweetness. It gave it more of the spice came through, especially on the backside. It, it gave it a lot more of that Kentucky hug that I love so much. So I had opened this bottle up uh, before coming to to drink with you guys today for day eleven, and when I did, I poured it on an ice ball, um, one of those clear ice ice balls. And I took a picture of the bottle, you know, because I got to be that tater that takes a picture once he cracks a fresh bottle and post it on Facebook and show everybody, you know, hey, the fanboy was drinking. But I was afraid to post it with the ice ball in it because I was just going to get lambasted for drinking <laughs> barrel strength bourbon. But uh, that's the beautiful thing about it. You can do an ice ball and you come back to it an hour later and it still holds up. Holds yeah, up it well. holds up. Absolutely. So Tyler, are there any barrels leaving? It, or let me rephrase it. Are there any bottles that are leaving the barrel at Hazmat one hundred and forty or more higher? We have not seen that. You've not seen no. any. And and like I said, everything that we do falls within that four to six year range. Um, you you can get that with some of the barrels that get older and older, like birthday bourbon things like that. But then it all gets batched down and proofed down. Um, so I do not think you're going to see a, a hazmat plus single barrel barrel proof. Gotcha. So Scott, here we, we can are. always dream. We can right. always dream, but I don't dream about hazmat cause there was that one day you guys snuck some hazmat <laughs> in on me and I'm like, uh, what did you just feed me? Was it liquid fire? We yeah. snuck those same two bottles in for Tyler the last time we spoke with you him. You did. You did. Actually, the they first were, time we spoke with him. But no, most of ours, uh, they fall between the 127 and 135. Um, it, and that's, that's typical for that four to six year heat cycled warehouse. Very cool. So here we are, we're wrapping up day 11. We're almost done. We've almost completed 12 days. I'm going to be a little sad when I don't get to see you guys again after day 12 and drink whiskey with you. Uh, but we have something really special for, uh, day 12. Let's not tell them. It's going to be a double hitter that day. Right. So we're going to double dose ourselves. So I'm really looking forward to coming back to see you guys on day 12. And for the 11th day of Old Foe, I hope you all found a single barrel, barrel strength bottle to try at home. Scott Minton, Josh, Tyler, we're all going to sign out. Don't forget to <clears throat> hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those good things. Hit the subscribe button. Share it. Share share an episode. That that's the big question uh, or our ask. You know, share an episode. We've just, got some great listeners out in Australia and Spain and in in Ireland. You know, share these episodes. You know, on your Facebook page, on your Twitter, or whatever. Let your friends know what you're listening to, and hopefully they'll pick up the same thing, and we can all join the big family together at Bourbon Barrel Talk. And at the same time, why don't you share a bottle with somebody else? Because that's what's really fun about bourbon. Absolutely, that's the best thing about bourbon is sharing it with your friends and your family. So Scott, Tyler, Josh, we're all signing off. Peace. <laughs>